We want to welcome you to another Haynes Ministries of Word and New Season. I'm Steve, and I'm here with my wife Susan, my daughter-in-law Danielle, and we're going to start the book of Hebrews today. And uh, I think before we go any further, I'm going to ask my wife Susan to pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your presence with us today, and we just pray that that you would just enlighten our understanding by your Holy Spirit as we delve into your word, God, to learn more about your will and your plan for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Did you want to uh, have anything you wanted to open up with? or I can start. If... Oh, you go ahead okay. and start. Okay. Uh, Hebrews. Hebrews doesn't have the author author's name inscribed to it and some have suggested that the Apostle Paul wrote it some have suggested that Apollos wrote it some have suggested that this one wrote it and that one wrote it um, I'm going to go along with the belief that the Apostle Paul wrote it I mean I don't know that I don't have any scripture to back it up but we do know according to Hebrews 13:9 that whoever wrote it was known or I'm sorry 13 19 Hebrews 13 19 it says I particularly urge you to pray so that I may be restored to you soon you know that sounds like uh, could be Paul you know he because uh, down here in uh, in verse 20 in 13 24 it says Greet all your leaders and all God's people. Those from Italy send you their greetings. So I don't know. I, it doesn't say who wrote the book of Hebrews, but I'm going to believe that it was the Apostle Paul. Amen. But anyway, uh, the book of Hebrews was to show Christians that uh, Christianity was far better than Judaism. And, uh, and it, it was uh, presented by one greater than Moses or the angels. Uh, the Jewish people had a high regard for Moses and the angels, you know, the uh, Jewish people. And, and, and uh, we're going to find where, you know, there's exhortations in the book of Hebrews. There's warnings in the book of Hebrews. You know, there's warnings against falling away. And we're going to cover all that as we come to it. Hebrews is an exciting book. Uh, there's epistles written to the Gentiles. Well, Hebrews is written to the Jewish Christians. Amen. And uh, we got to remember that uh, as I, I personally believe that being a Jewish Christian was uh, far more difficult than being a Gentile Christian because if you go receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, being a Jew... That is like committing blasphemy, you know, to a lot of Jews. to a lot of Jewish people, you know, and uh, you know, a lot of families uh, didn't have anything to do with with them anymore, and, and uh, Judaism was tolerated by the Roman authorities, and uh, the reason I say that is because persecution was was prevalent during this time, and. And a Jewish person that had become a Christian and uh, could possibly see all the sufferings and, and all the persecutions and all this and all that. So it might have been easy to resort back to Judaism, you know, Judaism. So, so it was tolerated by the Roman authorities, unlike being a Christian. But anyway, we're going to find where the sun is superior to angels. And when I say son, I'm referring to S-O-N, the Son of God, Jesus. Amen. And I'm reading from the New International Version, the NIV. And I'm going to start in verse 1 of Hebrews chapter 1. And we're going to kick this thing off. Right now, and it says, In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. It says in verse 2, But in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the universe. Now how many knows that in the Old Testament the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit 
indwelt the prophets, priests, and kings. Mm -hmm. It was the prophets, priests, and kings only. Yes, certain ones. <coughs> certain ones. And, and of course, when Jesus started his public ministry, well, he was filled with the Spirit. And uh, you know he he was all uh, he was all three of those prophet priest and, and king amen yeah. so uh, you know he could definitely be filled with the Holy Spirit but guess what we are we're priests and king amen, amen. amen. so that's amen. why we have the Holy Spirit now but in the Old Testament the prophets priests and kings were the ones that were filled with the Spirit and God spoke through the prophets He spoke to through some of them through dreams some of them through visions some of them he just downright visited and talked to and, and could i give a few examples of yeah. that I, yeah. I have uh, uh, here written down yeah god spoke to moses through a burning bush i mean god spoke to different Amen. people all different ways he got to get their attention he spoke to moses by a burning bush in exodus chapter 2 he spoke to Elijah in a still small voice Amen. in 1 Kings 19. And he spoke to Isaiah by heavenly vision in Isaiah chapter 6. Yeah. And he spoke to Hosea by his family crisis. I mean, there's some, yeah. you know, it said he spoke to, to um, uh, at various times and in various ways. He spoke yeah. in the past to the fathers yeah. by the prophets and one... Oh. He had Hosea go marry an unfaithful wife yeah. just to show um, Israel and God's relationship to Israel yeah. at that particular time. That's right. And um, he spoke to Amos by a basket of fruit in Amos chapter 8, verse 1. So he had all different ways that he spoke to different people, and he, and he did fill them with the Holy Ghost and speak to them directly by the Spirit too. Well, thank God he didn't use the donkey one time. Yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking of that when I was studying this. One time God used the donkey to speak to Balaam. Balaam. Yeah, Balaam was going the wrong way and doing the wrong thing and God spoke through a, a donkey to him. Yeah. So God can speak to us even now in various ways, but he, he mostly speaks to us through his Holy Spirit now, but he speaks through his word yeah. and uh, and well that's that he mainly speaks through his word which was inspired by the holy spirit amen 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 uh you know uh but anyway what god what the word is saying is that uh the old testament ways that's how god spoke but now we have a better way amen we have jesus amen and now it says in verse two but in these last days he has spoken to us by his son amen now do you want secondhand information or do you want it straight from the straight from the man i want it straight from the man you know it says spoken to us by his son whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe Amen. how many know that jesus made the universe yes he made the world he made everything in it and how many knows that by his word you know i was looking uh, on the internet the, uh oh a few years ago and and uh it was saying how the universe is still expanding, still expanding, still expanding. You know, that the universe isn't through expanding. Wow. You know, I mean, man, that's just Jesus' word. Yeah. It, it, still it, working. It, it's still working. It can't stop. Whew, just gives me goosebumps and chills. Okay. Amen. And of course, um, you know, the Bible says Jesus was the word made flesh. Well, let's I mean, just read that. I'll, you say something about it and I'll look it up and... Okay, it says he was uh, uh, the Word made flesh, and you know the whole Old Testament points towards Jesus. Yeah, and uh, you can read. Do you have it yet? Or? I have it. Okay, you can read that. Well, in the book in the Gospel of John, in chapter one, it's talking about how the Word became flesh, and it says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God." He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. You know, uh, 
God, you know, in the Old Testament, you had to shed the blood of bulls and goats and and what the poor people have. Uh, turtle doves. Turtle doves. Lambs. Lamb. I mean, well, lambs weren't, the poor people had like turtle doves. Yeah, turtle doves. I mean, you know, if you couldn't afford a lamb or a, or a calf or, you know, had the money for that, well, God certainly met the need of the people, amen. Yes. And, uh, but God is showing us, showing the Jewish Christians in Hebrews that, hey, you know, you have something better than shedding the blood of bulls and goats Amen. and turtle doves and, yeah. and this and that. And that uh, Jesus is the one, you know, that uh, he, he's, Jesus is speaking to us in these last days. And God, uh, he wants people to know that the New Testament is a better covenant than the Old Testament. You know, I'm, I'm glad that me and Susie don't have to go bring in a calf every Sunday to ask yeah. to shed the blood for our forgiveness uh, yeah. to yeah, cover our sins. Verse 3, it talks about how Yeah, let, is... let's just talk about it. Here in verse 3, Hebrews 1, 3, it says, The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful Word, after he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. And in the New King James Version, it says, he had by himself purged our sins. I yeah. kind of like it that way, purged our sins. Amen. And sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. You know, that word purging, I used to build uh, pressure vessels, bundle uh, pressure bundles and a, a coil assembly a pressure vessels and uh, every once in a while the customer would want a nitrogen purge and what we'd do is we'd completely dry, we'd hydro test with water and we'd drain that thing and rock it back and forth, back and forth, we'd blow air through it, blow air through it blow air through it, you know the customer wanted it dry and uh so and then we'd bring out nitrogen, you know, nitrogen freezes, you know, pretty good, you know. So anyway, we'd run a nitrogen purge through that pressure vessel. And what that purge would do, you know, and it just dry, you know, where the insides of the bundle section couldn't corrode and, and rust and this and that. Well, that's what the blood of Jesus does. It kind of cleanses us and yeah. keeps us from corrosion. Amen. Amen. So, you know, we can learn things in the supernatural by understanding the natural. Yeah. Amen. That's good. I like that. So, anyway. Uh, but I, what I like about after he had provided purification <laughs> for sins, I'm in verse 3, the latter part. It says, he sat down. Everybody say sat down. Sat down. He sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Now, remember when I was saying, you know, talking about the angels? Mm -hmm. You know, the Jewish people were pretty high. We want to apologize. We've had a bit of a technical difficulty here, but we're, we're in Hebrews chapter 1, and we're in verses uh, 3 and 4. Let me read 4. It says, So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs his name is superior to theirs and remember before we went blank i was trying to explain that angels were created and remember we read from the gospel of john the first chapter first few verses how the word was made flesh amen in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god well, that word is cap, capital W, and that word was referring to Jesus. Amen. That was him before he... See, the Bible says that uh, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. His humanity had to be born, but his deity had to be given. Jesus never had a beginning. He always was. He wasn't created. He's not like... You know, someone that's created isn't worthy to sit next to God the Father that has been created. Amen. 
Jesus always was. Yeah. Now, when we when he was born in a stable in Bethlehem, that's when he was born as a baby. But he always existed. Amen. Before then, his deity always existed. Amen. So that's. Uh, I just wanted to point that out, didn't I? Did you have something you wanted to say? Oh, well, yeah, because I wanted every, you know, you were saying some of the Jews um, highly regarded angels, and I'm not saying they shouldn't be respected, but we don't, like you said, we don't worship angels, and there's people today, though, that Amen. get off into worshiping angels, and I'm not talking about Jews, I'm talking about people that are supposed to be Christians and people that aren't Christians and they think that's the way to do it, you know. Yeah. And and we believe that there are angels, but we're going to talk about what their job is. But Jesus was meant to be higher than the angels. Yeah. He is the son of the living God. He Amen. is God. He's 100% God and 100% man. Mm. Whereas the angels are sent to be ministers to the heirs of salvation. Amen. You know, uh, like I said, angels were created. Uh, there's some archangels, there's some high-ranking angels that are in heaven around the throne room of God, the throne of God. But it doesn't say that they are seated. It says that they stand. Only Jesus is sitting Only Jesus. on the throne of God. And what really blesses me is you remember Stephen in the book of Acts said Jesus, he saw Jesus standing. When they were stoning him, stoning, stoning Stephen for and persecuting him for preaching the gospel. Jesus literally stood up and gave him a standing ovation. Whew, gives me goosebumps. Praise amen. God. But it says... In verse 5, okay, we're, we're still talking about angels. How, so, like Susie was saying, some people really do worship them. You know, and you they know, get obsessed with them. They get obsessed with them. The angels and demons and so on and so forth. You know, they talk about angels and they talk about demons all the time. And we need to talk about the grace of God. Yeah. Amen. And when we talk about an angel, because sometimes we will see angels, you know from yeah. time to time as a Christian or realize that someone may have been an angel. Yeah. But we need to keep things in perspective and glorify God yeah. for sending them to help us in certain times. See, we don't worship angels. We worship right. God. Amen. Yeah. Right. Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus is the author and the finish of our faith. He's the one that we look to and keep our mind set upon. But it says in verse 5, it says, For to which of the angels did God ever say? Now listen to this. You are my son. Today I have become your father. Now, has he ever said that to any angels? No. It says, or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. It's up to the angels to worship the deity, to worship God. Amen. Mm -hmm. We're not to worship angels. We're not to... Uh, be consumed with angels or demons or anything like that. We're to be consumed by the things of the Spirit of God and the Word of God and so on. Amen. Uh, but again, it says uh, in verse 6 of Hebrews 1, it says, And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, Let all of God's angels worship him. How I many knows that in Jewish, Jewish custom that the firstborn was always a more honorable position. Right, they inherited yes. the biggest part of the inheritance. They got the a state. double double portion. Mm -hmm. You know how double portion worked? You got to remember, you know, okay, let's just use four sons as an example. Well, three of the sons would get one-fifth of an inheritance, while the firstborn would get two fifths yeah. and that's how he got a double portion so if there's four sons it was divided into fifths but the oldest son got two two fifths and so on so on so mm. on oh, yeah. you had to use the math to, you know if there were seven sons it was divided into eights and so on but anyway uh, you know 
that Jesus was God's first begotten. Jesus is the first begotten Son of God. Amen. 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 But it says uh, uh, in verse seven, it says, "In speaking of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds, his servants flames of fire." But about the sun, he says, "Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever." And righteousness will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. Did you have something? Yes, uh, these okay. scriptures that we're going over now, um, the author of Hebrews, whether it's Paul or whoever the author of Hebrews is, he's quoting Old Testament scripture here. Yeah. And in Hebrews 1, 5, when he says, you are my son today, have I begotten you? He, he's inferring to, and see the whole Old Testament is pointing towards Christ. And he's quoting Psalms 2, verse 7. And then where it says uh, on verse 6 of Hebrews 1, it says, when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. That's in Psalms 97, verse 7. Yeah. And then Hebrews 1, 7, it says, And of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. He's referring to Psalms uh, 104, verse 4. So all these are, are scriptures that he is referring to that have been fulfilled in Christ and, and being confirmed. Amen. Amen. That's good. And I really like that in where he's talking about in Hebrews 1, 9, where it says, You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. Amen. And so, you know, there's another place that he says, Sit at my right hand. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make uh, your enemies your footstool. And that's... But anyway, in Hebrews 1, 9, it's, it's in Psalms 45, verses 6 and 7. Amen. Anyway, I'm sorry I skipped no, ahead, I'm, I think. But I'm anyway. glad that uh, <laughs> my wife put all those scriptures in perspective, you know, because, you know, we're, we're uh, you know, the Old Testament, is, you know, just type and shadow things to come. Right, and everything so, in the New Testament is showing how it's all fulfilled. It's bringing the words of the Old Testament together in the New Testament. So fulfilled you got in Christ Jesus. Remember, two thousand years ago, uh, Christians didn't have what you call the New Testament Bible. Yeah. You know, it's it been, being written. <laughs> it's been read to various <laughs> groups, and you know. And later, you know, it started getting all put together. And, it's being read as letters and yeah, such. But what they had was the Old Testament, amen? Uh-huh. So, anyway, in verse uh, 10, it says, He also says, In the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a robe, like a garment they will be changed. But you remain the same, and your years will never end. Now, how many knows that Jesus is coming back, and he's going to set up a thousand-year millennial reign on earth, and at the end of that thousand years, there's going to be a new heaven, a new earth. How many knows that the earth was created that like humans it wears out and gets tired too amen but God Jesus is going to make a new heaven a new earth uh, I think the universe is going to remain the same it's just the earth and the new heaven uh, the Greek word for heaven is uh, I think referring to the atmosphere the atmosphere I think the universe as we know it will remain the same uh, but the atmosphere and a new earth will come about and you know heaven itself uh, New Jerusalem will will come down and and so on and so forth that's another story and we'll get into that one of these days but 
Uh, anyway, the earth is, is like humans. It gets old, and Jesus is going to make a new heaven, new earth, and that's something we don't want to miss out on. In a few, few moments, my wife's going to pray as soon as we finish this. And uh, if you don't know Jesus, today is the acceptable day of your salvation. You don't want to leave this world without Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You don't want to get caught dead without <clears throat> Jesus. Amen. Uh, but in verse 13, it says, To which of the angels did God ever say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Verse 14 finally says, Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Now, to go along with what Susie's been saying, you know, people that worship angels, angels aren't to be worshipped. God has sent them to help us, amen. That's right. They're to serve us, amen, those of us that know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. So this ought to put a stop to that And if you've been worshiping angels. I mean, there's nothing wrong with... Uh, well, it's okay to know that there's angels, because yeah. there is. And the Bible says they're encamped around about those that fear God. Amen. I mean, and, and many of us, have, God has uh, delivered us from catastrophes at some time, or, or car yeah. wrecks even, because of, of angel. angels that he Amen. sent. But we give God the glory, but we, we do know that angels are in the equation, but we don't worship them. Amen. But... Uh, Next time we come together uh, on Wednesday, we're going to go over Hebrews chapter 2, and we're going to talk about warning to pay attention. Uh, well, I'm going to read verse 1. It says, We must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that, you, so that we do not drift away. Remember what I told you. We're going to talk a little bit about this next time, too, that... Uh, Judaism was tolerated by Roman authorities and uh, so there was less persecution so to speak other than being a Christian if you're a Christian there is heavy persecution you know so I, I you know I understand these guys how they would want to drift away and go back to the old way and and have less persecution and all that but how many knows that even though there's storms in life God uh, he never promised there wouldn't be storms, but he did promise to never leave us nor forsake us. That's Amen. right. He's there with us. So join us next time. We're going to talk about that. <clears throat> and I think unless anybody has anything else to say, well, we're going to close right there. And I'm going to ask my wife, Susan, to just take over. And she's going to uh, lead you in a salvation prayer and uh, probably give you a few announcements. And then we're going to close. Okay, like Pastor Steve was saying a few minutes ago, um, we were going to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We've been talking about Jesus and you know God sent him to this earth and he's the express image of the Father. And he, he was with that, he was 100% God, 100% man. He was without sin. And he came to this earth to show the love of God to you, but also to purge you from your sins. And the way he did that, he was a sinless sacrifice. He gave himself, he gave his life on a cross for our sins and for your sins. And if you, in the third day, he rose again from the dead. Now he's sitting in heaven, um, the majesty on high. He's sitting in the throne of God uh, to right next to the Father. And if you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, let's pray this prayer. Father in heaven, Father in heaven thank you for sending your son Jesus. Thank you for sending your son Jesus. To die on the cross to purge me of my sins. To die on the cross to purge me of my sins. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. That God raised him from the dead. That God raised him from the dead. So I can live a life of victory. So that I can live a life of victory. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, forgive me of my Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And be Lord over my life. And be Lord over my life. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer in faith, believing you are a child of God, your sins have been purged. You've accepted this free gift that Jesus has given you. 
And now it's time to, today's a new day. It's time to walk in newness of life. Get out your Holy Bible, dust it off. Join us every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Time for our Bible study, A Word in Due Season. We're going through the whole Bible. We're starting with the New Testament. Uh, we want to hear from you. Tell us what God's done for you. Tell us how he saved you. Tell us how he's blessing you and what you've learned. And you can write to us at Haynes Ministries uh, at gmail.com. Or you can call our, that's Haynes Ministries at gmail.com. Or you can uh, call our prayer line and leave us your prayer request at 918-893-5522. That's 918-893-5522. We want to hear from you, and every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Central Time, we have a, our church service, Hope Family Church, and we'd like to invite you to come to that as well. You can view us uh, live. Go to HanesMinistries.org. That's Haines, H-A-N-E-S, Ministries.org, and you can join us live, or you can watch our archives and or you can join us on youtube and um we want to we want to hear from you we want to see you there god bless you god bless